So, good morning, everyone. We're from group two, and we're going to present our material entitled Brief History of Australia. And you can see here, here's the list of members of group two. And for the first presenter, please. So, introduction. Australia is a country in Oceania bordering the Indian Ocean and the Southern Pacific Ocean. Australia comprises mainland Australia, the island of Tasmania, and several small islands in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. The ter terrain is mostly low, plateau with deserts. Australia is the sixth biggest country in the world and the smallest continent. It lies between the Pacific and Indian Ocean, about 3,000 kilometers from the mainland of Asia. It is very far away from Europe, and by plane it takes you over 20 hours to get there. Australia is often called down under because the whole continent lies south of the equator. Australia has been called the oldest continent, the last of lands, and the last frontier. Those descriptions typify the world's fascinations with Australia, but they are somewhat unsatisfactory. In simple physical terms, the age of much of the continents is certainly impressive. Most of the rocks providing the foundation of Australian landforms were formed during Precambrian and Paleozoic time. Some for 6 billion to 252 million years ago. But the age of the course of all the continents are approximately the same. History of Australia. Australian prehistory. Humans are thought to have arrived in Australia about 30,000 years ago. The original inhabitants who have descendants to this day are known as Aborigines. In the 18th century, the Aboriginal population was about 30,000, 300,000. The Aborigines, who have been described alternatively as nomadic hunters, gatherers, and fire stick farmers, known for using fire to clear the brush and attack grass eating animals instead of cultivating the land, settled primarily in the well watered coastal area. Some observers believe that the poor treatment of the environment by the Aborigines over many centuries may have led to the barren nature of much of the Australian interior. Higher forms of mammals never reached Australia because the land bridge from the Asia ceased to exist about 50 million years ago. History of Australian First People Australia is made up of made up of many different and distinct Aboriginal, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander groups, each with their own culture, language, beliefs, and practices. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are the first people of of, of Australia, meaning they have lived on the Australian continent for more than sixty thousand years. This means that they have the oldest they have the oldest living cultural history in the world. Pre-European -Europe colonization, Aboriginal Australians were cultivating and irrigating farming, farming areas, establishing fishers, fishers and building permanent homes. Their understanding of the environment and its natural resource super thriving village across the continent. Contrary to popular misconception that they were all hunted and gathered clans. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples live in urban and regional, regional and remote area and are present in communities not necessarily on their traditional lands or islands. It is important to remember too that uh, regardless, regardless, regardless of where Aboriginals and Torres Islander people live, their identity remains connected to their cultural and ancestral homelands. For example, you might identify as a Yungwal person, the first people of Canberra region, but live in Brisbane. Australia during 17th century. During the 17th century and 18th century, European explorers reached Australia. In 17th 
1970, Captain Cook claimed Eastern Australia for Britain. He called it New South Wales. Life was hard for ordinary people in the 18th century and punishment for even minor crimes were severe. In the 18th century, convicts were transported to Virginia and Maryland in what is now the USA. Transportation was a relatively human punishment. After the American War of Independence, 1775, 1775 up to 17. 83, this was no longer possible and the government began looking for a new destination for transportees. In 1786, it was decided to send them to Batney Bay under the command of Captain Arthur Phillip. On 13 May 1787, a fleet of 11 ships set sail from Portsmouth. On board were 759 convicts, most of them men, with sailors and mariners to guard the prisoners. With them, they took seeds, farm implements, livestock such as cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, horses, and chickens, and two years' supply of food. The first colonists came ashore at Port Jason, Jackson on 26 January 1788. Captain Philip left Australia in December 1792. He took samples of Australian plants and animals, also took to indigenous people with him. At first, convicts worked on government land for provision, but from 1783, 93, those who behaved well were freed and given grants of land. Also, the first free settlers, settlers arrived in 1793. Next. Australia in early 19th century. Relatively few new people were sent to Australia during the long wars with friends from 1793 to 1815 because the war at sea made that difficult. Nevertheless, the colony continued to grow. The second governor of Australia was John Hunter. He was followed by Philip King. The first colony settled in Van Diemen's Land, or Tasmania, in 1803. In 1804, a new settlement was founded at Newcastle for convicts who committed a second offense. In 1813, the Europeans discovered a pass through the Blue Mountain that enabled them to spread inland. The Rima was founded in, 18, in 1829. Partners and Goldberg followed it in 1833. By 1825, the wide population of Australia was about 25,000, while Tasmania had a population of about 40 and 500. Transportation to New South Wales ended in 1840. Transportation to Australia ended completely in 1868. Meanwhile, the system of granting land to be ended in 1831. From then on, land in Australia was sold. Early rebellions in Australia. All did not go smoothly in Australia at the beginning of the 19th century in March 1804. Some Irish convicts led by Philip Cunningham took part in a rebellion at Castle Hill. A second rebellion, the Rome Rebellion, occurred in 1808 on 26 January 1808. A group of soldiers led by Major George Johnson arrested William Blythe, governor since 1806. He was held prisoner for over a year until he finally agreed to leave Australia. In 1809, the British government decided to replace Blight, and in 1810, he was succeeded by Colonel Macquarie. The growth of Tasmania. In 1798, George Bass and Matthew Flinders sailed through the Straits and proved that Indian land was separate from mainland Australia. The first settlers arrived in Van Diemen's land or Tasmania in 1803, Hobart was founded in 1804, and Lancaster was founded in 1805. In 1825, Tasmania was separated from Australia for administrative purpose. Transportation to Tasmania ended in 1853. In the 1870s, tin was discovered in Tasmania and the industry grew up. In the 1890s, Copper mining in Tasmania boom. The population of Tasmania grew rapidly from, and the University of Tasmania was founded in 1890.
spread to other parts of Australia. Brisbane was founded in 1825 and Western Australia was founded in 1829. The city of Perth was founded that year. In 1884, John Batman decided the site of Melbourne was a good place to found a settlement. In 1835, he made a Australians in which he gave them trade goods for land. Regarded it. Was founded at Port Adelaide, which grew in settlers arrive in Australia every year, fleeing poverty in Britain. The white population of Australia was about 160,000, was about 430,000. Such as Charles Sturt and Thomas Mitchell explored the interior of Australia. It, Made a separate state from New South Wales. Queensland grew from a settlement at Moreton Bay, which was founded in 1824. Queensland became independent in 1851. When were sent to Australia, they were enjoined to live in amity and kindness. Indigenous people of their land, the indigenous people part of the rights and parties of European Australians. One of the leaders of indigenous resistance was Herman Gray, who was released from 1790 to 1802. However, eventually shot European diseases such as smallpox, influenza, measles, to resistance also devastated the indigenous Australians. Intermittent warfare between Europeans and indigenous people continued for decades. Fastly outnumbered indigenous Australians. The number of indigenous Australians had fallen drastically since the beginning of the century. From the end of the century, taken away from their parents. And in 1990, men of European descent to live with an indigenous woman. In Eureka, the Eureka rebellion occurred because the government introduced license for gold miners. The miner claimed that authorities were corrupt and unfair. The sentiment grew and on 17 October 1854, the Eureka Hotel was born. 9 November 18, held a meeting under a new flag, the Eureka flag. They were led by an Irish man named Peter Lalor. Robert Burke and William Wills set out on an attempt to cross Australia from north to south. All right, now we're moving on to the Australia in the late 19th century. So in this century, there are three chronological events that happen. The first one is Northern Australia began to grow. The second is uh, the development of infrastructure. So as the third is they face a problem here. So the first one is Australia began to grow. This is uh, <clears throat> this century. They found a, a city which called Darwin. And also, uh, as well as in which when we talk about the economy in this uh, sub northern Australia, they fully rely on the cattle because of the, due to the um, hot weather, that's why that they also rely in that as, as well as for the, uh, in the sugar plantation. As well as for the uh, development of the infrastructure, which is the second event that happened. And here, uh, there are, it, it branches out into, into two in terms of the education as well as infra infrastructure in general. In, uh, in terms of education, the Sydney University as well as uh, Melbourne University was uh, founded in um, 1850s and 1853, as well as for the infra infrastructure in general, they uh, built a railway, railway in here in 1850s and uh, it was begun to, uh, it started to develop in 1850s and it just, it 
if they bring so many stops, so the transportation in here also become more advanced and enhanced in here, as well as for the communication also improve uh, due to the invention of telephone. Uh, but however, in 1850s, they uh, found uh, economic decline or the recession in here, but they managed to survive in 1882 due to uh, the gold rush event. Uh, However, this time the gold was exploited by large companies rather than uh, loan prospectors. The populations of Western Australia boomed as the result of gold rush. Next. So Australia in the early 20th century. By, 1000, by 1901, the population of Australia was over 3.7 million and it was growing rapidly. The population of New South Wales, about 1.4 million. The Commonwealth of Australia was formed on 1 January 1901. And then after 1913, a new capital city was built at Canberra. After 1900, Australia recovered to some extent from the recession of the 1890 but they come worldwide. And then in the 1900, bubonic plague stuck a number of Australian cities. So in Sydney alone, 103 people died. And then Sydney also suffered an outbreak of smallpox in the 1913. But fortunately, only four people died. And Australia in the first world, was declared in August 1914. And then the first Australian soldiers left by a ship in November 1914. And then some 60,000 Australian men died in the First World War. And then in the 1920, immigration from Britain continue, continue and Australia continue to grow. And then Sydney became the first Australian city to have a population of 1 million in the 1922. And then Melbourne followed it in 1928. And then Sydney Harbour Bridge opened in 1932. And then at the end of 1920, there was industrial unrest in Australia. The first commercial flight in Australia was in 1921, but uh, between Generalton and Derby in Western Australia, in 1923, radio broadcasting began in Australia. And in 1928, a Queenslander named Bert Hinkler, 1928, 892 and 1933 made the first solo flight from Britain to Australia. In the same year, 1920, the flying doctor service began. Okay, Australia in the late 20th century. After 1945, the Australian economy boom. In the 1950 and 1970, in 1960, there was full employment and affluence. Meanwhile, the Australian National University was founded, founded in 1946. The School of the Air began in Alice Spring area in 1951. And television began in Australia in 1956. Sydney Opera House, a symbol of modern Australia, opened in 1973. In the late 1940s, displaced people left homeless after the war in Europe were welcome in Australia. In the 1960s, immigra immigration police changed and many ASEAN immigrants came in the 1970s and 1980. There were also many immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe. There were many immigrants from Britain after 1945. Nevertheless, links with Britain began in 1949. The National Citizenship 
citizenship and made Australia no longer citizens of the UK and colonies, but citizens of Australia. And finally, in 1982, all appeals to the British courts were end. The High Court of Australia was made the highest court of appeal. Meanwhile, in 1970, in 1957, a trade treaty was made with Japan and links with Asia become more important. Treatment of indigenous Australia improved from 1959. Indigenous Australia were allowed welfare benefits and after 1962, they were allowed to vote. In 1971, Indigenous Australia were included in the census for the first time. From 1949 to 1974, a great civil engineering scheme was built, the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme. The plan was to collect the water from melting snow in the Australian Alps and divert it through tunnels to drive hydroelectric power stations. The water would then flow into rivers for irrigation. Over 25 years, 16, 16 dams were built, 12 tunnels, and seven power station workers from more than, seven, more than 30 nations toiled on this scheme. The Mabo Judgment. The turning point in Australian history came in 1992 with the Mabo Judgment. Indigenous Australians claimed that the island of Mer belonged to them and not to the Crown. A card a court finally overturned the doctrine of terra nullis, the idea that Australia did not belong to anybody when the Europeans arrived. In 1993, the government passed the Native Title Bill to clarify rights to ownership of land. Next. Yeah, in the 21st century, in 2020, the population of Australia was 25 million. In 2006, it was estimated that the indigenous population was about 500,000, about the same as it was when Europeans first arrived in Australia at the end of the 18th century. Unemployment was high in the 1990s, but at the beginning of the 21st century, the situation improved. The Australia is a prosperous country in 2008, Quentin Bryce became the first woman Governor General of Australia. In 2010, Julia Gillard became the first woman Prime Minister of Australia. In 2020, the population of Australia was 25.6 million. Geologic history. The geology of Australia includes virtually all known rock types spanning a geological time period of over 3.8 billion years, including some of the <clears throat> oldest rocks on Earth. Australia is a continent situated on the Indo-Australia plate. The geologic history of the Australian continental mass is extremely prolonged and involved, continue from the Archean to the recent. In a gross pattern, continental Australia grew, grew from west to east, with, uh, with Archean rocks mostly in the west. Proterozoic rocks in the center and Panerozoic rocks in the east. Recent geologic events are confined to intraplate earthquakes as the continent of Australia sits, sits distant from the plate boundary land. To find land records in Australia, you must know some of the history and development of Australia as it was settled. The following is a brief chronology of land dealing in Australia. Next. 1788, governor given power to Greenland at his discretion. 1780, private, non-commissioned marine officer and free settlers given free land grants. 80 and 4, rich settlers.
learns given grants if they will make major improvement to land. 1824, sale of crown lands begins freelance grants limit to 2,560 acres. 1831, free grants held at public auction of lands begins. 18, 1836, squat, squatters enter lands outside the original 19 counties of Nail South Wales. 8, 1843, English Crown Lands are regulated price of land. 1847, sale of West Lands, a great settler. Settled, intermediate, and unsettled classification for land opening now possibilities for settlement settled by the general population. 18, 1858, torrent system of land confined and reg registration in South. Australia provide title registration for the first time, other states follow. Initially, all land in Australia belong to the Crown, with, which used three basic methods to dispose of the land. Free grant sales and license and leases. Alienation is the term used to describe the passing of land from the government to an individual on a permanent basis i.e. free grants or sales. License and leases allow the government to come back and possess the land at a future date. Okay, so that was our presentation from Ruto.